Donald Trump is first, then Hillary Clinton has her convention next week. Very different candidates with an identical challenge. Use their four days in the spotlight to frame how you view the choice. Donald Trump wants you to think the most imperative changing Washington is the most imperative thing in this election. A new face and a new way to deal with creating jobs and stopping terrorism. Hillary Clinton, well, she has a different view. She wants you to think a steady hand is what the country needs right now. She wants you to think that Donald Trump is a loose cannon, a narcissist, not a calm commander in chief. So it's game on when the conventions start, beginning here at the Q in Cleveland tomorrow. Two powerful data points as we begin this new phase. Six in 10 Americans, six in 10, think the country is headed in the wrong direction. In a clear majority, 54% say they feel less safe than they did five or 10 years ago. Now, those are pretty powerful openings for Trump to make the case for change, something different. That is his challenge here, to come into this room and say, Washington is broken, I can create more jobs, I can keep you safer, she's part of the status quo. The Republicans understand what they need to do for four days. The question is, can they pull it off? Yeah, I, mean, I think if Trump stays on script and if the <laughs> pros who are, are, are running the convention and the party and, and his campaign can create a coherent message, they should be able to get a balance out of this. I mean, um, I think part of the reason why the, the VP rollout was a, a lost opportunity is because that should have been a 10-day, two-week uh, good message opportunity for, for the Republicans. Uh, you know, they can still make up for it but by having a good week here. Um, uh, and I think that there's no reason to think they should. Can he stay on the prompter? That's the question. Will he give a speech that is scripted and written for him, that is appealing to the broad swath of voters, that is going to be uh, compelling to those who are still undecided at home? If he can, and if everything else goes off smoothly, I have no doubt they're going to get a bounce out of it. I think as much as Hillary Clinton is trying to, you know, capitalize on being the steady hand and what she was doing as Secretary of State while Donald Trump was, you know, running the entertainment world, um, I think that she has a burden on her now, especially with what we've seen in the last couple of days in Nice. People are afraid. They want to hear that she's going to do something different. Donald Trump is obviously going to do something different. People just don't know exactly what that is. And so it really does uh, put pressure on her to roll out plans of how she would protect Americans, you know, in a way that uh, that people are not don't feel safe with President Obama right and now. And one of the things that uh, Donald Trump, uh, when he looks at the poll numbers, is can be hardened by is is the fact that a lot of polls have him leading Hillary Clinton on the issue of who can keep America safe, right. on national security, on terrorism, which is one reason why. And on the economy. And on the economy, oh. which is one reason why they're going to push that very, very hard this week and make Hillary Clinton look like someone you cannot trust. There's going to be a lot of focus on Benghazi, yeah. on uh, her the criticism that she did handled classified emails carelessly, the criticism by the FBI director. Uh, so that's going to be uh, a big Good focus point. in right. a large part right. because uh, they believe it plays into that national security argument. So you have sort of these two competing dynamics in the country. One is if you look at demographics, the Obama coalition, uh, the organization and the infrastructure, the professionalism of the campaign teams, advantage Clinton. If you look at the change environment, you know, Two-thirds of Americans think we're off on the right. wrong track. Uh, people are frustrated about the economy. Now you have the anxiety and terrorism fears. The, the climate for change, sometimes the climate for change overwhelms the traditional campaign metrics. I think that's the big question for me for the next four days that's is right. can Trump frame this as a change election so that when the Democrats raise the curtain in Philadelphia, they sort of have the, the American people thinking, you're not change. No, exactly. Uh, Trump certainly is change. Uh, in a way that, that she is not. And look, it's hard to see any Democrat who would still be struggling with Donald Trump, or at least uh, not struggling, but uh, this competitive with Trump besides her right now. Um, and I think part of the reason why that is is because she so embodies the sort of political status quo. Uh, if the Trump folks can seize that opportunity, take advantage of that, they should have an opportunity to gain, gain traction. The polls coming out of this. But John, the problem is, as you know, those poll bounces from from you know conventions can be so funny. Right. So, yeah. uh, and even if and even if uh, they do frame this as change and probably successful because it could be successful because of course voters hate Washington. The one thing that the Clinton campaign does have going for it is that the president's uh, numbers are actually pretty good right now. Uh, right. He's been on the upswing. Uh, that could and he she's essentially running for a third Obama yeah. term. Yeah. Uh, that could that could a healthy Barack Obama is incredibly important for her, even if she does roll out pretty 
uh, conventional, more establishment type uh, right. speakers but, at her convention. But th what they're going to, what the Democrats are going to do, they're going to say this isn't change. This is extreme home makeover. This right. is you know knocking down all the house, and then wh what do you have? So their 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 challenge is to show this is too much. She's the steady hand. He's too much change. You don't even know what you're going to get with this. It's a, it's, a, it's a box with a question mark on it. And, and, and to that point, as Donald Trump prepares for this convention, the Democrats assume, we'll see if he goes off script, but they assume the Republicans know how to put together the program. And so Hillary Clinton is on television. Now, her ads have not been all that effective so far. They spent a lot of money, and yet Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are a neck-and-neck neck race. Uh, but if you look at this one, as Donald Trump tries to reintroduce himself to the country and say, close your eyes, you can see me as a president, well, Hillary Clinton's on TV saying, uh, listen to how this man talks. You don't want your children in the room. They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. And you can tell them to go themselves. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. When Mexico sends its people, they're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. I guess the, the question is, is the Democratic counter-program, including all that ads, can they sort of at least try to mitigate Trump's bounds? Look, I, I actually think that part of the reason why Trump is struggling to get above 40 percent in some of these swing states, places like Colorado and Virginia, where he, he is losing outside the margin of error and it's below 40, is in part because of the barrage, not just the Clinton campaign, but, but super PACs that right. for the last two months now have been hitting him pretty hard on TV. Yeah, in some states, it seems to be working. In states, I call them the new America states, states that are more Absolutely. diverse. Absolutely. States that are more diverse in their population that are sort of around the corner with the economic transition. Virginia, Colorado, Clinton's numbers look pretty good. You get into the more gritty industrial states, they're much more tense right there.